Folks, a major voice of voting rights has also passed away. Lonnie Guineer uh, was the Bennett uh, Bosky Professor of Law Emerita at Harvard Law School. She was the first woman of color granted tenure at the university. Guineer was nominated to lead the U.S. Department, the U.S. Justice Department's Civil Rights Division in 1993 by President Bill Clinton, but. Because of a huge outcry, uh, her nomination was pulled. She was never uh, happy about that and was a fierce critic of President Clinton, uh, a longtime friend for that decision. Uh, Guineer was surrounded by family and friends when she passed away. Uh, again, she was 71 years old. Michael, I'll start with you. Many people uh, who were... Who were around those times, remember that. Uh, conservatives mm -hmm. really went after her, chastising her legal writings, uh, things along those right. lines. Uh, and it was a very contentious uh, battle that still resulted in them pulling her nomination. Yeah, Roland, you know, I, I remember that uh, period of time. I, rem I remember her nomination being pulled. I remember uh, I was in college at the time. I remember the exuberation of uh, her nomination in the first place and then being attacked by these white male Republicans, which reminds me of when Kristen Clark was attacked by these white male Republicans as well, uh, and not even uh, Senator Tim Scott voted for her, but that's another story. But, um, you know, this is uh, this, and I remember her tenureship at uh, Harvard as well. So um, I think she's a legend, and it, the issue that she was attacked on was voting rights, largely and her views on voting rights also. And it's interesting that we're having this debate now and this fight now for voting rights in 2022 also. So this is a big loss as well. Uh, Kelly, uh, she obviously was a uh, pioneering figure, first woman of color tenured at Harvard University Law School, uh, but also uh, someone who was a brilliant legal mind uh, and many civil rights attorneys uh, praise her for her teachings, her leadership. Absolutely. I mean, without her, we wouldn't have so much jurisprudence um, theories now, you know, in regards to civil rights, in regards to women's rights, in regards to so many hot topic issues of today that, frankly, were still really controversial and somewhat taboo at um, at the height of her career. So um, I was not necessarily around during the Clinton administration. I was, but a little too young to remember <laughs> those things. But uh, the fact that um, I, too, went to law school and, you know, read her works and researched her and knowing um, that without her, I wouldn't be where I am today, um, you know, just rest her soul. Uh, Matt. I echo some of Kelly's sentiments. I was a little young during the Clinton administration, but from what I've read, I just want to echo that, you know, we should all stand to be as courageous as she was. We should stand to be courageous even when we stand to lose uh, things that might otherwise be, you know, benchmarks of our careers, things like appointments. And what I've read, she was okay with letting that go if that meant that her life's work was something that she got to stand on. So I appreciate her work and I appreciate her legacy. And as a civil rights lawyer, I appreciate her blazing the way forward for people like me. Uh, we have him on to talk about the, for our Sydney Portier tribute. But I do want to get a lot of Dr. Greg Card uh, with the Department of African American Studies at Howard University to uh, share his thoughts on the passing of Lonnie Guineer. We're going to do something more expansive on her on Monday. Obviously, the passing of Sydney Portier overshadows her death as well. But we're going to be sure to have more voices discussing her on Monday. But Greg, go ahead. I appreciate that, Roland. Um, yeah, I'll add my voice to everyone else. Um, I was three years out of law school when the Clintons, when Bill Clinton betrayed Lonnie Guineer. And I think the thing that strikes me about Lonnie Guineer is the context of her courage and her intellect and her work. Um, after that betrayal, she took a professorship in Philadelphia at the uh, University of Pennsylvania, and I was living in Philly at the time. So I had the occasion to see her, uh, to hear her. Um, her father, Ewart Guineer, was actually the first chair of African American Studies at Harvard. And she was, in fact, as you say, the first non-white woman to uh, gain tenure, to be appointed with tenure to Harvard's law faculty. And that came after Derrick Bell, another of her kind of jegnas or mentors, uh, resigned from the faculty of Harvard in protest because they had never tenured a woman, uh, a non-white woman. And Lonnie Guineer came after Derrick Bell had left Harvard. Um, her writings, and I'll end with this, her writings, as we've just heard, very influential. I think about her book, The Miner's Canary. Uh, I think about her book, Lift Every Voice. 
um, where she really does have this theory of voting rights, as Kelly said, that is really, I think that's really what got those white boys mad at her, because her, her she had a concept of proportional voting and dist distributive voting that was considered out of the box, but really spoke to the heart of democracy. Her last book, The Tyranny of the Meritocracy, really took on the idea of a society where you claim that if you work hard enough, you can achieve, but the simple fact of the matter is the game is rigged from the beginning. Like when there was a giant, and 71 is young. But uh, yeah, I'm glad that, you know, in, in coming days, you'll have more of a, a bring some people together to tribute. But she, she was a remarkable figure and, and a great, courageous person.